Okay, for all of you militia-minded individuals out there that want to be a little more practical uh, in your gear loadout, uh, granted I feel that militia setups these days are kind of derpy at best, and the, what they're trying to do is uh, kind of, you know, wrong, and they don't really know as much as they think they do, and they're not really as prepared, but concentrating on the gear aspect, I just wanted to cover uh, some gear that I would actually use if I were in a militia, which I'm not, um, something that I would use as it, as an overt force that I think is very practical and effective and it's drawn from my experience in combat and what I found actually works. Uh, going from patrols to posts to carrying heavy loads and having to downsize and do assaults and stuff like that. So I'm going to go through all this gear, explain the purpose behind them and why I have it as a Line 1 piece of gear. Now, first off, I just want to explain what Line 1 means to me. Line 1, to me, is your first line of defense. First line of defense physically and defensively. So, in that case, I roll clothing into it, so I'm going to be covering that. So, let's go ahead and get into it. When it comes to clothing, I have based on my experience, uh, kind of compiled all the stuff that kind of matters, and I'm going to go through them individually, of course. So, the principle of an overt force is typically for engaging large elements and doing sabotage, etc., uh, at least in a militia force, but we'll go ahead and break down that philosophy in another video. So anyways, of course you want a camouflage that is appropriate for your environment, uh, an area of operation. So for me, Woodland's a pretty good general camouflage, but it really isn't the best for here in Alaska. We have a lot of browns low in the foliage. So we got a lot of like bare plants uh, where their stems are brown and they don't really have too many leaves on them. So something like the Italian Vegetato, uh, the standard Italian uh, camouflage pattern would actually work a little bit better than Woodland for a bottom. but. The thing that you want to concentrate on when it comes to pants is you want to have as many pockets available to you and you really want it to be durable. When it comes to clothing, you want to be prepared to be a, have to wear it for days at a time without a change of clothing because it could very well come down to that. And that was the case when I was deployed is I didn't actually have changes of clothing and I had to rely on it, uh, rely on what I was wearing. And I wish it was a little more durable. So... Uh, lessons learned from that. Uh, I like these true spec pants. Uh, they are, uh, they're not too expensive, but they're a pretty good investment. I've had these for years and I've used them a good amount. They're very durable. And uh, yeah, it's going to make you look kind of tactical if you're at the range using it. But if you're rolling around on the ground, this is going to last a good bit. I don't even have any fraying of the edges or anything. Now, for the tops, there's some principles that you want to stick with. And I have a a DPM pattern right here. I'm not sure if it's Dutch or British, but uh, I believe this was an engineer uh, unit because there there was an engineer patch that I took off. And anyways, with these, there's a couple principles that you might want to have depending on the environment and the uh, weather that you're dealing with. Like here in Alaska in the summertime, uh, this would actually work pretty well. This is a surplus, you know, woodland pattern. These aren't the most durable. I, I'll just tell you that right now. These surplus uh, little light jackets are not really that durable. But what it does is it breathes very well and you won't have to worry about sweating too much. So, with all that said, um, that's that. It does have a good amount of pockets. They're deep pockets for holding gear that I'm going to go over in a little bit. Now, when we're talking about things that go under here, personally, I don't wear underwear like uh, boxers, tidy whities whatever. So, uh, as far as shirts are concerned, I would actually recommend that you use a cotton t-shirt that fits exactly as a little bit snug, but, you know, obviously not constricting to wear under here. It helps uh, wick moisture and it retains enough heat without being too ridiculous. So... Anyways, let's move on to the reason why I brought this DPM pattern out here. I do like DPM. It works fairly well in this environment. But the biggest thing about it is this is a tropical uh, version of their DPM. It's very lightweight, very thin, but it is very durable. They make a, the 
a density of this material is very good and it does not fray very easily and it's a little bit baggy but that helps control the temperature so you know it's an option but of course it is going to be limited on pockets like right here but I like how the pockets uh, right here how they kind of fold in with the top flap as you can see here and then they close up you can see this little bend right here but anyways I also like having button up uh, pieces instead of zippers yeah zippers are a little more convenient but I like having buttons they typically last a little bit longer in my experience and th this zipper is you know basically on its last legs if not on its last legs the little piece fell off there but I still have the little zipper component so you know it's not that great but I could still use the zipper but going into different positions you could tear it up and tear the zipper right off. The next thing that I want to cover is socks. I cover t-shirts, now it's time to discuss socks. Get yourself some nice thick wool socks. It'll save your ass and it'll be very comfortable on your feet. And with that, I'm going a little bit out of the realm of clothing. Harden your damn feet. Spend as much time as you can on your feet. Harden your feet. If you're very serious about serving in a militia, you're going to be walking a lot most likely. You're on your own. You're going to be on your feet more. You're not going to most likely have very good relief force, and you're going to be on your own and have to be on the move a lot. And also, a bandana to control sweat. Even if you're in a cold environment, you're going to be sweating a good amount. So you need to take caution not to wear things like boonie hats and stuff that can fall off. In my experience, bandanas or beanies will work very good and it'll keep your profile pretty low. So, next you want good boots. I do not like these ones because it has glued on soles and uh, the problem is that glue that it's using uh, can basically separate and then you'll have a delaminating after you know use in the sun, the cold and the hot weather contrast uh, transition and you know, just the general rough usage, it can end up not working that well for you. Now, let me go ahead and backstep a little bit on the camouflage patterns. You want something that's very complementary, as I brought up. Vegetato works very well for the lower portion, like leggings and stuff. You don't want to have a consistent pattern that you're basically going to stick out like a sore thumb in a wood line or in the desert. You can break up your pattern a little bit more. That way you've only got this much that is one color and this much that is another color and it helps break out, break your uh, profile up. If they see one consistent line moving around, it's going to show your position a lot more. So I like to break up my patterns a little bit but still complement them like this tiger stripe works very well with the DPM and the woodland and even my Marpat patterns. I would like them to be a little more faded out because it's a dark green. It kind of borders on... Uh, not contrasting properly so anyways let's go ahead and move on to the gear element okay before we start off talking about the gear that you want to have on your person I wanted to go ahead and cover the fact that you want ballistically rated sunglasses I would not recommend really uh, uh, clear eye protection unless you're going to do a lot of night operations or night patrolling whatever uh, but uh, shaded sunglasses are going to be darn near invaluable so definitely do that you got to protect your eyes so you can see a lot better so anyway I'll go ahead and set these to the side now the first thing that you want them to have on your person is probably a good knife and a belt so you can get 511 belts and belts like these uh, this came with uh, another pair of like tactical cargo pants that I have but a good fixed blade or even a folding blade if you wish uh, I recommend non serrated something that's going to be a good utilitarian blade and I find tanto blades to be just that so it can do a several things from opening cans uh, basically cutting branches stuff like that for fires and I just find this to be a very good blade, very well made blade by Cold Steel. It comes in at about 30 bucks. It's very easy to have several of them. I like the sheath, very good kydex, and also I like the retention method. It has a friction fit, but it can also, you know, buckle in if you wish. If you don't want this buckle on there, um, then you're probably going to want to take this uh, off and unscrew it. But I have a review on this knife, so go ahead and check that out. So belt that's pretty much uh, you know it for the knives unless you want a folding blade to stick in a pocket whatever 
Okay, for the next piece of gear, obviously you want a pistol on you. It's for self-defense. Line one, you still need to be able to defend yourself. And the way to do that is have a good uh, pistol on your body and have it protected for when you need it. So it is still fast to draw, and I recommend this Blackhawk Special Operations holster uh, specifically for the reason that it gives you everything you need and nothing you don't. So you also get an area to put a spare magazine in. You always want to have a spare magazine. You don't want to just roll out with what's in the first magazine. And you know you want to have spares when you can. So this holds everything. The next thing I like about this holster is when you're wearing a pistol on you, you need to make sure that you can actually run in it without it flopping around a bunch. This rides pretty high. And here you can put it through your belt velcro it onto your belt, I'd recommend just velcroing it down and threading your belt through it, but you know, it's up to you to make that decision. It's going to ride pretty high on your thigh, so it's not going to move around too much. Now, of course, depending on the gear that you're using, obviously, I don't use a battle belt, so, you know, my line one is just going to be a holster on my hip. So, anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the, also, you know, one thing before we move on is you want to have the color appropriate. You don't want to be mixing and matching too much, but a coyote tan or an OD green will work well in wooded environments and even desert environments, so it's up to you to decide that. Next thing I want to talk about is the gear that you want to have on your person in your pockets. So, with my experience, uh, there's a few things that you want to have on you. And in my pants, starting from the bottom, I like to carry you know, a ration of food. I used to stuff crackers, chewing gum, whatever, to kind of give me, you know, little Scooby snacks, and this is pretty much all I have. This is a 400 calorie Mayday ration. I've done a review on this on my channel as well, so go ahead and search for that in gun reviews, in the gun reviews playlist. So anyways, this is in around my ankle, so, you know, it's basically out of the way. It doesn't weigh much. You don't want to stick MRE stuff in there. It can be pretty, uh, pretty heavy and when you add it all up, and this is very this is very low in profile and it's not very heavy so it's not really gonna you know mess with your ability to walk so also i recommend having a, a medical kit on you uh, being around my ankle it's very easy to access and it's pretty much out of the way uh, of my gear my gear isn't going to obstruct it so you want a tourniquet for hemorrhaging control and stuff like that. I like to preset this rat tourniquet to be able to slip over an extremity, a leg, you know, arm, leg, you know, whatever. So that's that. And then also I like to have waterproof bandages. Uh, basically it has a waterproof, you know, a little shell and you just tear it and then you have a good um, bandage, sterile bandage to use. Now, the next thing is quick clot. You might need to use quick clot after you get a tourniquet on if you have time. You don't want to sit there and be dealing with quick clot when you're under fire. It can be pretty bad. You want to win the fight first. Uh, mission accomplishment before troop welfare was uh, the name of the game in the Marine Corps, so I think that carries over very well. So. I carry this on my ankle, but there is another option that is less obtrusive but very easy to carry this stuff, and even, you know, food and other items as well. This is an ankle medical kit by Lynx Defense. I've done a review on this, and I've talked about its general purpose capabilities, so you want to have something that is low profile and isn't going to obstruct your ability to be mobile and, you know, weigh you down too much, and this carries it very well. So right here I have a bandage and it velcros on very securely. And over here, I have some compressed gauze. And if you wanna carry a flashlight on you, that's fine, but I don't really find the need for a flashlight too often. Also, you can have sterile gloves, some slight administrative uh, pieces of gear. So, also, you can even carry your ration in this, like uh, one of the Mayday rations will fit in this if all, if you just want to slip the rat, tea, rat tourniquet in here or whatever other tourniquet and just put it around your ankle. It's got a little sticky uh, type material right here. It secures around the ankle. Not really going to have to worry about it cutting off your circulation, but it's very affordable, about $25. So, anyways, let's go ahead and move on. Now we'll go ahead and move on to the jacket or blouse as we call it in the Marine Corps. Uh, it's up to you to 
uh, call it whatever you want, but if you're going to be wearing a waterproof top, obviously you want to transition the materials, and I'll go ahead and talk about the setup. So, first things first is you'll want to have pockets that can be reached under whatever you want to wear. Body armor, if you're going to wear body armor, you want to make sure that it's... Uh, you know, non-obtrusive, it's pretty lightweight because line one, you still need to be able to defend yourself and you need to be comfortable wearing it. So with that said, I would recommend carrying camouflage paint on you or, you know, camouflage yourself up and then you don't have to worry about having this on. You can also use, you know, mud or, you know, whatever, uh, stain your face, whatever you need to do. So also in here, one of the biggest and most important thing to have is a compass and I recommend a compass that is folding you can get a lensatic compass a military surplus the tritium might be worn out but you want a good compass and have it protected because it will be getting pinched in your gear and then in here I have some small survival items and one piece isn't really for survival, but it's for kind of comfort that you can afford to keep on you. So this right here is called the shit kit from Potty Packs. These are relatively inexpensive. You can get a bunch of them for not too much money. And it comes with a bag, you know, some sanitizer, and you know, you can have something that you can easily dispose of your stuff in. I would not recommend carrying around the bag unless you want to just waterproof everything like I did with this. You have your toilet paper, hand sanitizer, wet wipe, and even one of your tush wipes to, uh, you know, keep the friction down and keep the dingleberries away, if you will. So, anyways, you could use the complete kit like I do, but it's not really necessary if this thing is sealed already but you're not going to really be able to wrap fuck it if you keep it sealed. So, you know, do what you will. So, anyways, that's out of the way. Next thing I would recommend is this very lightweight life straw. And this thing is amazing because this thing you can drink straight out of the water. Again, line one, you're on your own and you need to evade and escape. You don't want to be carrying too much on you. This is very good for that and this is where basically having good amount of pockets that are easy to reach is a good idea as well if you want to keep your body armor on you don't want to have to shed gear in order to get through these items that's very important if you can stick some of this uh, these comfort items in <coughs> uh, like this I would put it under my gears it takes a little longer to get to it but it's kind of out of the way and then uh, with other things like the compass, you're probably going to be using that a lot. Camouflage paint is not really necessary, but, you know, you, I would put it under my gear. Like, if I'm wearing body armor and there's a pocket under my body armor, I would stash it there. Uh, for the water purification, uh, it, it's up to you to carry that. But, you know, personally, I think that it's a, a very good piece of gear to have. Last piece of gear I wanted to go ahead and recommend is kind of in the clothing section, but... Um, you need a good pair of gloves. And the principle behind getting a good pair of gloves is you want something that's durable. Not going to make your hands in too too much bigger than your bare hands. Something that fits very tight, doesn't clump up at the fingertips, the palms, whatever. Because you need to be able to handle your firearm with them. And you need to have good dexterity. I recommend these first tactical gloves. I have the medium gloves. They're not padded. and They're not the lightweight model but they're very durable even in the lightweight model they basically fit like latex gloves they're not really too difficult to get on but as you wear them they get easier and they're very durable and they're very inexpensive about twenty dollars a pair so you can get several of them but it doesn't obstruct my ability to use a firearm also it has pretty good grip so it's not too much to worry about um, as far as your ability to grip the gun is going to improve it. And there's other there's other versions that have more padding. They're a little bit heavier uh, in the padding on the back only. This never changes. The palm never changes on the type that you get. So you can also get the hard knuckle right here. That is, they're individual knuckles, so you're not going to have to worry about them being misaligned or anything. So. Very good gloves, very inexpensive, doesn't cost much to upgrade to like the hard knuckle uh, gloves, so I highly recommend them. Handles heat pretty well, and it's something that you can use all day without having to worry about it. As you can see, there's not 
any material here for it to clump up. They have it based on, you know, male, female sizes. So you can find a good size for yourself and I highly recommend them. So First Tactical has like the best gloves, I think. Good combination of durability, fitting, and dexterity. So, and having good options as well. So that's the last piece of gear that I can recommend. Let's go ahead and wrap up. So everything I showed you, minus things like cigarettes, wallet, you know, walkie-talkie or whatever, this is gear that I would recommend in line one. And I, you can leave your comments below on what you think. You might think that this is too much to have, but in my experience, you know, sitting on post or whatever, you want to have this kind of stuff all, pretty much on all the time. And it's still useful uh, if you're going to be using something all the time like a compass or uh, gloves or you know your you need your pistol available consider it a line one item because it's the most important and also the knife you don't want to put these things on a battle belt something you can take off on a quick release a lot of this stuff it takes effort to take it off with a belt and that's kind of the point but it's very lightweight this whole kit doesn't really weigh that much and it's very easy to do a lot of work in it uh, minus you know you wearing body armor like AR 500 body armor can be a little bit big and bulky uh, there's really no getting around that unless you want to wear like level 3a soft body armor that's up to you but anyways this is basically the gear that I recommend and it's uh, from extensive experience and uh, with these uh, pieces of gear this layout and also my experience on deployments so anyway leave your comments below thanks a lot for watching check out the blog I did on uh, the blog article I did on this on doitright.org it'll have pictures and you know details that you can mull over if you wish so anyways thanks a lot for watching you guys have a good one